Welcome to the review of Fountain of Dreams. This game was created by Electronic Arts in 1990. It was actually supposed to be a sequel to the game called Wasteland that was developed by Interplay, but Interplay had nothing to do with this production. Eventually EA dropped all claims that it was a sequel. It takes place in post-nuclear war Florida where Florida was literally separated from the rest of the United States. The purpose of the game is to create a small party and find the fountain of dreams in order to cure all the mutations that are going around. So the first thing of course is to create your party. There's various classes you can have which are kinda interesting. You have a survivalist, vigilante, medic, hood, and mechanic. The game is very similar to Wasteland although there are some changes as well. For instance, there's the concept of skills, which is more of a limited subset than Wasteland, and you have the same attribute types, strength, IQ, dexterity, etc. You'll notice also that there's con and max con, so it appears as though they used a similar game engine as Wasteland. So in the beginning, as you're creating your party, you assign a certain number of points to your attributes. The user interface is a little bit clunky and strange. Like for example, in order to get out of this and save your character, you have to hit escape. It's not very intuitive. At first I tried hitting one, two, three, and I just started changing the class of the character and was losing it. Until I finally discovered that escape is how you save. So once you add three party members, you begin the game. The map is a bird's eye view, similar to Wasteland and there's little character icons that once you walk up to them you can actually start talking to or perhaps even attack an NPC or some monsters. You'll notice again that the animations are very similar to Wasteland. It's very limited movement. There's a place in the beginning where you can retrieve and store party members inside this building which is kinda cool feature. One of the improvements to the user interface over Wasteland is that it makes it easy to see what key to press to select an option. Here the Y is for yes and the N is for no. Messages are displayed at the bottom when anything happens on the overhead map. Again, very similar to Wasteland. If there's too much text to display, a dialog box will pop up. At the top of the screen you'll notice it has a row of the character names and you can press a hotkey in order to view the status of the character. You can view their condition, their equipment, their skills, and by the way there's active and passive skills in this game compared to Wasteland. Certain items can be equipped like weapons and armor. When you do equip something it puts a little diamond next to it in your inventory. In order to use an active skill it's not very intuitive. You first have to use the arrow key to go over to the active section and then you push the number of the skill. You can view afflictions from the status screen too. Here we see irradiated and mutant for Sally. And on the main screen you can view a whole status of the entire party. You can also reorder the party which can be useful especially as you get more and more NPCs to join you which incidentally you can have up to five party members total and of course you can banish characters. There's this morbid looking doctor that lives in the village in which you start. He's the most powerful doctor in the game. He can cure any type of disease including removing mutant problems. You presented with this menu if you want to have something cured and it's free. So this guy is by far one of the most useful NPCs in the game. At the bottom of the screen you'll notice my hit points are going up because I'm healing. There's also other doctors scattered throughout the game but of course they have to charge you and they're not quite as good as the original doctor. One thing that's kind of funny on these menus is some of the text gets truncated if it can't fit. So here you can learn doctor ski instead of skill. A survivalist has a pharmacy skill which they can use to cure some poison and medics can also use their medic skill. Another way to actually heal is to hold down the escape button 
and watch your hit points go up as time goes by. If you're familiar with Wasteland, you are familiar with the concept of entering and exiting locations. It works the same way in this game. In fact, the game actually saves behind the scenes when you do this, just like Wasteland. The maps work off of a hierarchical concept where you keep drilling in and zooming in farther and farther on the map. You'll run across many NPCs in this game. You have the option of hiring, attacking, using an item, or leaving. Man, is that guy ugly. Occasionally, you'll run across an NPC that'll actually want to join your party. Here we've asked Junior to join and he accepted. And we've picked up another guy. Once again, you can only have up to five characters in your party. Some of them that you ask are, of course, more powerful than others. So that's where the banish function comes in handy to get rid of people that you no longer want. You'll run across NPCs by just going into their houses sometimes or knocking on their doors. Sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're not. One of the cool things is there is a lot of variety in the actual profiles used for the pictures. They didn't shortchange the artists in this game. You even have some hot chicks like this woman named Aster, who incidentally you can get to join you later, but you have to follow certain things in the game to make it happen. And here's another hot chick that you can get later. There's a lot of random encounters in the game. Sometimes if you're just standing around, you'll get attacked. Kind of the same concept that the Bard's Tale game had. The enemies appear in groups, just like Wasteland, and they can appear anywhere from 10 feet to 90 feet away. You have to be 10 feet next to them in order to use the melee weapons. Otherwise, of course, you have to use a ranged weapon. Your guns can jam in the game, and of course you can unjam them, or simply equip a different weapon. And you can do this in the middle of battle. There's other hazards like becoming irradiated in combat. You can be knocked unconscious, seriously injured, critically injured, comatose, or finally dead. Very similar to Wasteland. And when you die in this game, you're just booted out to the command prompt. That's not very fun. Flaying in Fountain of Dreams is very tedious. You can run from combat, and then your little icon appears, and so does the other enemy's icon. And if they see you in vision again, it bumps you back into combat, and so then you have to keep fleeing like this. There's a wide variety of monsters, such as red rats or dober mutants, or one of the toughest one, killer clowns. Yeah, that's right, killer clowns. Look at that gun. And look at my party members dying off like nothing. I always knew clowns were scary, but this game takes it to an all-new level. After three rounds, my whole party's dead. And here's another guy, Big Top Guard. That doesn't sound too good. Wow. That was fun. There's some skills that will increase automatically in combat, such as evasion, if you are fighting tough enemies and you can dodge them. Here our brawling skill went up. Whoever kills the monster gets the experience in this game. And when you do kill them, you'll find some loot sometimes on the ground. Which is always fun. Once you get a certain amount of experience, you level up. And unlike Wasteland, you don't have to call in or anything like that. It just automatically makes you increase in level. And then you get to distribute two points to your attributes. If you increase aptitude or IQ, that can affect the skills you can learn if you can happen to find some books in the game. Here there's some books I'm trying to read, but I'm not smart enough, so it says I'm not interested. There's many hazards in the game, such as this sawgrass. Step on it, and 
rips you to shreds. There's also certain areas that have mortar fire. Ouch! The game is definitely not easy on you. There's putrid water, which you can drown in. You could pretty easily say the wrong thing and start a big fight. Or you could just make a wrong move and walk somewhere you shouldn't. And this bartender gets pissed off and attacks us. You can try to take some paintings and be a nice little thief and get attacked by this massive army. Yeah, bad move. But luckily there's some clothing stores in the game that sell some armor for you, which is very critical in this game. You'll pretty much die for sure if you don't have good armor. You can also sell your equipment, but they only buy the same types of items that they sell. Another cool little feature is that the shops will actually close based on what time it is. You'll run into things in the game such as passwords in order to continue on and progress, which can get kind of annoying. And the biggest problem is one bad choice and it can ruin the whole game for you. And the reason why is it'll actually save it automatically. And then when you restore the game, you're screwed. Here we attacked an innocent person and you lose experience when you kill them. I guess they really want you to be a good guy in this game. Sometimes you may find it worth killing an innocent person because you can get some awesome equipment. This guy was loaded. Got some good cash. Ooh, even an Uzi. There is an annoying bug where sometimes when you kill somebody, you can't get their loot because the door is blocking it or it's in their house. The game's full of little pieces of comedy too, which I'm going to stay quiet and let you observe some. That's a long enough moment of silence. There's some cool graphics in the game which show signs and advertisements, which are kind of cool. And there's some other things which I haven't mentioned, such as the ability to become mutated. And there's certain items, such as this DeSoto rum, which can put your mutations into remission for a couple days. So, in closing, I'd like to say that this game has a lot of charm, like the original Wasteland. It is quite a bit smaller, and it's much more difficult. But don't let that discourage you from playing this long lost gem. You'll have quite a few hours of fun. Thanks for watching the review of Fountain of Dreams, and I'll see you next time.